So when it comes to piston rings, the traditional material would be cast iron. However, I've heard of people using PDFE uh, with quite some good success. So I had a quick look on the internet and I found this article on Model Engineer's website uh, making uh, PDFE piston rings. So it's worth having a look and I'm going to follow this uh, procedure to the letter. So in this article they discuss the method of making um, piston rings from graphite filled PDFE. So I've got some 25% graphite filled PDFE here. It's not cheap but it's not overly expensive as compared to some other filled PDFEs such as glass filled PDFE. So when you make piston rings from cast iron uh, you keep the split line uh, very small. Um, ideally a few thou, but with PTFE it's got a much higher coefficient of linear expansion so it will expand more on uh, temperature change so you have to allow a, a wider gap so to compensate for the wider gap the piston rings are made to overlap as shown in this diagram so you have quite a large expansion allowance and I've gone through the calculation here for my size of uh, piston rings which are 32 millimeters diameter and so the expansion allowance is 1.2 millimeters. So the idea is you decide on an overlap G and from that you calculate the angle theta which you need when you come to machine the piston rings. Uh, this angle is the angle that you will use on your uh, rotary table. Rather than decide on an overlap, I decided on an angle of 35 degrees because that's a nice round number to use on the rotary table. And therefore calculated the uh, overlap G which came out at 8.58 millimeters or 0.337 inches. And then I just crunched the numbers and the other formulas to calculate the outside diameter of the, the blank. Uh, which came to 35.1 millimeters plus a machining allowance uh, for final machining. That's 1.38 inches. And then the inside diameter of 29.7 uh, uh, millimeters, which is 1.17 inches. So I calculated those for a section thickness T of 2.7 millimeters. So let's get machining. So I'm just going to see if I can sink a, an end mill in there to get a hole started. Twenty seven point four. So I'll just set this to 35.9, near enough, zero of that. So 
so that's 10.8 to come off So that's point four. I think we'll settle for that. So the uh, width of the ring is 2.7 millimeters. I need to make it uh, 2.8 so I can lap it down to size. I'm going to put on three and then I can adjust it. So that is three millimeters. So we need to come back point two. Just get my DTI in line. Point two. Try it there. Okay, I've made up a little uh, tool just to hold these for lapping them into thickness. So I'll just check on the thickness of this one. So it's 2.8, so there's at least 0.1 to come off. So I'm starting with uh, 800 wet and dry. No, I'm not, I'm starting with 400 wet and dry. So it needed to be just a really uh, free, close but free fit inside the, uh, the piston. So there's quite a bit of weight to go yet. It's just not quite going in. Starting to go in there now. That's pretty close. That's just going in. So we'll go to the fine. So I'll finish off with 800. Okay, that's the uh, four rings done. So 
so they're a nice easy fit in the uh, piston groove there's no resistance there whatsoever but also when I try and twist the ring there there's virtually no play so I think that's a pretty good fit that should do very well